Welcome back. We're going to acknowledge the season by drawing Norman Rockwell's image of a little boy in a Santa suit. Um, the proportions of a child are not the same as proportions of grown adults. So we are going to think about that and try to estimate uh, what we think his proportions are. And let's take a look. Here's the size of his head, about like that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You see how he's about six heads tall? Grown adults are never six heads tall. So we're going to start with a very simplified little construction for his head. And notice that he is very straight. His weight is distributed equally above both his feet. So we're going to drop straight down. And we're going to think about making him about six heads tall. Like that. I'm sorry, I keep losing focus today. There we go. Oh, it lost it again. What's going on here? Focus lock. Hmm. OK, that seems a little better. OK, so we've got, see how I'm trying to indicate the, the volume of his head in a very simplified manner. I'm showing the way his head is turned. And um, because his rib cage is tilted back so much, his neck is not tilting forward the way it normally would. Um, his head is, his neck is basically going Neck is going back slightly. That's what I'm going to think of for the rib cage and the pelvis. And notice this is challenging because his body is so covered by all these clothes. Um, we're going to place the bottom of this foot to the left of our starting point and the the other foot is up above and to the right of it. So you see how I'm thinking about this? Like this is the this is the point directly under his head, but his feet are kind of spread apart and the one one's up here and one's down below it. And you see how I really haven't done much yet, but I have a sense of uh, the pose and how he's, which way he's looking and how he's holding himself. Um, I'm going to extend these arms out like this. Um, I'm thinking of the elbow is swinging down around the bottom of his rib cage. And it's going to be tricky for you if you haven't drawn children before to draw the proportions correctly. Um, if you look at Renaissance and especially pre-Renaissance painting, you're going to see a lot of uh, kids uh, painted and drawn with adult proportions because having learned proportion, you're you're going to be disposed to um, draw what you know and not what you're seeing. But what you're seeing in the case of a child is quite different. So I'm going to just draw the big shape of the Santa suit. And there's the pillow that's He's trying to 
fill this suit with. And I really could have made this, this really, really distended. Um, part of the reason I picked this is because it, it is one image that tells a complete story, which is what, that's sort of the direction we're moving towards in this class. And um, when I first started trying to do narrative painting, um, I had a teacher at the Skowhegan School, a still life painter, who really kind of looked down on narrative painting. And uh, I think her exact words were, uh, uh, it's 1987. If you want to tell a story, make a movie. Like art, the role of artists in telling stories was was over as far as we, she was concerned. And I disagree with that pretty strongly, but the fact that she honestly articulated her belief forced me to consider, you know, why should we try to tell stories with, with drawings, paintings, even still photographs? Like, why try to tell a story when uh, there's better ways to do it? You can, you can tell a movie and give a lot more information. Um, it's not an easy question to answer, but I guess uh, the best I can do is to say that um, when you only see one moment out of a story, uh, it gives your imagination something to do, um, namely to sort of guess what came before and after this moment and uh, you have to fill in a lot of the blanks, which is exactly what you do when you read a book. Obviously, when you read a book that doesn't have pictures, you're forced to uh, invent all the illustrations out of whole cloth. And people enjoy that because uh, we enjoy thinking. We're humans. So um, I think there's something weirdly compelling about this that would be less compelling if it was a scene from a movie and we got to see the whole thing, if that makes any sense. Um, so having taken the drawing this far, and I apologize for working kind of fast, and I'll, I'll talk more about the hand when we get to it. Um, but once I feel like I kind of have the gesture and the weight of the figure is, is OK, um, I like to get right in and do the portrait. Portrait's much easier to do now than it would be if I waited until the figure was more detailed. So um, when you're working from a computer, always do what I'm doing right now and zoom in uh, because it's much easier to work from a larger reference. And we're going to try to understand the proportions of this head. Um, as I did with the Santa bag, it's probably going to be useful to sketch the hat first for scale. And most of you are going to want to make the hat too small, so let's take a little measurement here. If we measure sort of around where the chin is, and then we measure where this is, this is sort of right below eye level. You see how this is roughly divided in half with, with this side being a little bigger. So I'm going to make a little line for eye level about there. Um, and then I'm going to make sure that I make this side a little bigger than this side. Like I said, most of you are going to want to make it smaller. Just don't, don't make the tiny hat. So it's really a large hat compared to the size of the face. And here's the fur trim of the Santa hat. And the top of the Santa hat. 
And just having the hat drawn actually helps with the overall balance of the figure. Um, sort of creates that counterweight to the belly, visual counterweight. Obviously, neither one of those things weighs a whole lot. but um, And make sure you have enough distance between the little tassel here and the shoulder. I could probably use a tiny bit more distance. Okay, features. The most important thing is to really have an idea for yourself. Where's the center line of this head? And that's sort of going down the center of the forehead, down the bridge of the nose, to the philtrum, middle of the lower lip. And notice that center line is way, way off to the left. Um, and that's because the head is, is turned somewhat. like that. So now we've got the forehead. Notice also his eyes might be, a, we'd expect them to be a little below center on the head because uh, of him being a child. The cranium is large in relation to the face on children. Um, I always look for where the tip of the nose is in relation to the outside contour of the head. In this case, it's almost touching the cheek. And without a lot of practice, you're probably going to find this pretty challenging to draw this big open mouth. Um, but it's a good challenge. Like the most interesting thing you're note, you should be noticing about that is the overall shape. We've got the dental arch on top curving around with the lip following it like that. And then the bottom, the jaw is like that. So the basic shape is sort of like a sideways heart. And the teeth are going to be visible and not much else visible on the inside. Oh, we can sort of see the bottom, bottom teeth also like that. Um, it's very hard to make an open mouth expression like this look natural. Usually um, uh, the first, your first couple of tries, it's going to look like a like a frightening, like like he's screaming in horror or something. Like, it's, it's not going to be the emotional effect that you want, but um, that's par for the course. Don't don't get too hung up on it. Just see if you can possibly make him look a little bit cheerful. Um, I need to straighten out this outside corner a little bit. And having drawn the nose so close to the edge of the face, you're going to notice we have very little room to put this eye. But we don't need much room because that eye is pretty massively foreshortened. It's turning, it's turning away from us pretty strongly. And what most of you are going to want to do, don't do this. Most of you are going to want to put this eye like way too close in, like that, because you really want the bridge of the nose to be centered between the eyes. And that looks pretty bad, right? So look what happens if we just open up that space, um, maybe find a reference. Like, you see how if I drop a plumb line from the inside corner of this eye, I end up above the dimple on the outside corner of his mouth. So I can find that reference first and then go straight up and put the eye where it belongs way out here. 
and that's a much more uh, much more attractive look for him, don't you think? Um, he's got these kind of apple cheeks, they used to call them, so we're going to sh do a little shading right here to show that little plane change. And we can't really see his chin because he's got his little Santa beard on, so we're going to just draw the beard instead. I think in the olden days, uh, dads often used to have these Santa costumes, and they would... Uh, let their kids like sneak out of bed at night and watch them uh, putting the presents under the tree. But I don't, my, my dad certainly never did that. Would have been cool, I guess. A little scary though. So I just, this often happens, so let me, just be honest about it. Uh, I, I sometimes, even with my years of experience, I'll make the head just a little too big. And then as I start working my way down, I find I have to drop things. And I may end up having to drop the feet a little. But it's good for you to see that happen. So you know it's like, it's not that big a deal. Um, you know, it's something you can accommodate. And if you don't get around to the shading, uh, that's, that's going to be fine. Just try to get all the outlines in. There's his little ear. This would probably be a good time for me to take a little break and let you catch up. And if you are at home doing this over the holiday, uh, you could pause and get caught up at any time, of course. Okay, so we're going to work our way down now to the sleeve. We're going to look a lot at Norman Rockwell um, coming up shortly because of the way he used photographs. It's a little depressing to learn that um, Rockwell actually uh, projected some of his photographs onto the canvases. Um, but when you see how many photographs he used and how, how he changed them, he was basically such a master that he could get away with stuff like that without um, especially because er early on his early in his career for many years he didn't have um, access to that kind of photography so he had to teach him how uh, he had to learn how to do it the right way before he sort of succumbed to the pressures of commercial illustration and used projection as a way just to speed things up So notice this beautiful gesture. We can see like there's the forearm along one axis. And make sure that you see how the wrist is under the cuff here. 
and then the b body of the hand is angling down slightly like that. So be sure you see this little axial change at the wrist is what makes it look like that like he's holding the bag. And I'm going to throw in a little detail here for his pajama pants and do a little shading in here. And we don't really have much detail at all on the Santa belly. Um, I'm just gonna, as I darken it, I'm just, I'm giving it a little more projection here, but. Now remember I said I drew the head a little too big and I'm going to double check a measurement here. So from the top of the hat to the bottom of the elbow should be about the same as the bottom of the elbow to the bottom of the Santa suit. So that this distance should be about the same as that. Um, which I suppose it is, so I guess I might not need to lower the legs. Probably the, the, the nearer leg is going to end up coming down a little, because if the bottom of the belly is here, here's the top of the boot. And try to keep up with me as we're mapping this out. Here's the top of the boot. Here's the the fur cuff on the boot. Here's the leather cuff under the fur cuff. Here's a little crease. And now here's the main part of the boot, which is indeed going to end up coming down just a little below where I had placed it earlier in my first draft. But notice that I did that first draft with such a faint line that I'm really not even, I don't even have to erase anything. I'm just going to draw right over it a little further down. And you'll see that in master drawings all the time where they don't even erase their corrections. They just sort of, as they get farther along in the drawing and they get more confident, they, they draw darker and that but you can still see all their first tries. So that looks about right to me. So it might be fun to do some of the light effects on these boots. Um, I'm going to outline a few of the highlights, just indicate for myself where they are. And then I'm going to do a pretty solid first shading everywhere except the highlights.
at this point after first shading remember that's when we can assess our work and I'm going to say this toe needs to come out a little further and maybe this sole comes down a little further here that's always the best time to make corrections and once I'm happy with it I'm going to do my second shading uh, very black and if you'll remember from what we learned about shading an egg and especially in that helpful Proco video um, the center light of an object like where the object is in the most direct light does not have to correspond to where the highlight is so here you can see that we have this bright highlight um, that I'm this right here with with some dark accents all around it and there's nothing illogical about that that's just what often happens because the plane of the highlight has to be perpendicular to the light source but the plane of the I'm sorry the the plane of the center light is per perpendicular to light source, but the plane of the highlight is um, at the angle in between the center light and where you're sitting. If you remember Proko's uh, billiard table analogy. So you can see how leaving those half tones and highlights and shading pretty dark all around them gives us that nice effect of really shiny boots. And we're drawing something where local color is pretty important because in order to recognize the Santa suit um, it helps to realize that this is white fur and this is red that's a local color difference they're receiving the same amount of light but we're doing a black and white drawing we're not going to shade this in red but it will be more recognizable if we go ahead and do a first shading on all the red parts because it before we do that the the uh the cuff of the boot really doesn't look white. And because this is very flatly lit, um, we're not going to be doing a second shading on here. We're just sort of laying in a tone to show that it's a different value than the rest of the suit. And there's that nice little pillow. Little cast shadow under the arm. Just a little hint of some shadows at the back of the leg. And again, that dark local color of the Santa hat. fringe of hair behind his ear. And a little extra darkening inside his mouth. Oh, 
Okay, if you're at home, you probably want to um, pause the video right here and finish. Oh, I really should put the suit on the ground too. Suit on the ground is not part of your assessment, so I'm just going to draw this and give you a little more time to finish your drawings. I don't even need to mention that as this is a public school course, creating this drawing of the young man in the Santa suit is not representing endorsement of any particular creed or faith, but only representing a slice of Americana that we just happened to be doing during the last class before the December vacation. Okay, that'll do it for the video. So long at home, thanks for watching.